Hi everyone, welcome back. Wow, high profiles, high standards, greater responsibilities. Now you people are the celebrities of the school, right? I can see your happy faces there. Are you all happy? You all are eating proper food, maintain a good diet. You should, because when we grow with high responsibilities. We should take care of health too. Yes. I am Krishna Kripa, the communicator English teacher for this academic year 2020-21. You might have spotted me holding a pen, writing over the book, isn't it? I was just recalling the past. When we write exams, we always complain about our pens. We call the teacher, did you say, teacher, the pen is not writing, the pen has stopped writing, the pen is off. We feel very miserable to see all this, right? Here is a solution for it. If we bring a slight change in our sentence, it carries more meaning, it turns more meaningful. Let's discuss how do we bring a change. A pen is a tool which helps us to write, to draw, or to scribble anything. It carries a fuel inside, and that is the ink. When the ink gets dried out, obviously the pen stops writing. So, when we come across the scenarios or incidents, we should say lines. Teacher, my pen's ink has gone dried out. Or, my pen's ink has dried out. May I use other pen? Or, may I go with the other pen? It's all. Very simple. My pen's ink has dried out. May I go with the other pen, teacher? Talk the all. So, this can be the first step. When we enter the exam hall, just refine and remember you were reminded to bring to go with a pen and her knees. Yeah. And today, let me welcome you all to a beautiful yet simple topic. She is a four letter word. She turns godly at times. Sometimes she is very gorgeous. Sometimes she can't think grief. She is very pleasing and yet crisis too. She runs with her greatest speed. Can you guess what I am about to say or where I am about to discuss? She even carries a caption. The caption goes like this. Without me, you can't run the show. What's the caption or the slogan for her? Without me, you can't run the show. I hope you got the answer and is very close to it. Ready to share? If not, let me share. The word is none other than time. T-I-M-E it's very precious indeed. Yes? So today, we will be dealing with the prepositions of time, the expressions of time, are two cordial words, and then the three versions and preparation of the food. Okay? What are all the things? The prepositions of the time, expressions, two cordial words and then the three versions in preparing the food. Right? So let's start session. So let me introduce the prepositions or the helpers of time. We have up to six prepositions for time. Very simple one. I thought to my mind I think 
is a better time to make all of these. Let's begin from the first step, right? The prepositions are at, on, in, for, since, and by. Let me read it for you. At, on, in, for, since, and by. What is the importance of at? The preposition at is used to denote the time and the station. Station means a place or a location. Let me give you an example. I wake up at 6 a.m. You know what is a.m. and what is p.m. right? I usually wakes up at 6 a.m. See the preposition at has been used before the time. Okay? Let me give you another example. Let us go with the station or the place. Consider Mumbai. I was at Mumbai yesterday by this time. I was at Mumbai yesterday by this time. It tells about the station where the person was by that time. Hope oh, that's clear. Let me give you another simple one. I was at home yesterday. So you may think there should be a question for that. Where were you yesterday? Here is absent. I was at home yesterday. So that's important to time related to preposition at. Okay. I used home because it was denoting your time spent at home. Clear. Yeah. Okay. Let's move to the other preposition in. We use the preposition in with month, years, or seasons. Do you want examples for that? Here they are. I was born in the month of May. See, the month has come. We have used the preposition in before the article. Yes, so I was born in the month of May. What happens if we go with the years? Let's see to that. I was born in the year 1986. But if you consider the year year of birth, you can even bring a change over it. I was born in the year 2012. I was born in the year 2009. Yes. Bring the changes as per your need, as per your want. But never change the preposition that is used before the month and the year. Be clear with that. Let's move with the season. We always used to get vacation during the summer season, right? Grab the memories of the past, writing letters for your friends, dropping the greeting cards. I posted a greeting card for my friend in December. I posted a greeting card for my friend in December. Or, since we have to make a season over there, I posted a greeting card for my friend in the spring. I posted a greeting card for my friend in the spring. Clear? Now, it's time to move the preposition on. We use the preposition on before the days. Let's take an example. We always trouble our mothers to make sandals, right? To get biryani, to get some other kind of cutleries, to get some other cravings. They smell 10 cents to get the food. Isn't it? So let's try to make a sentence of this. Every Sunday or on Sundays, my mother usually prepares biryani. On Sundays, my mother usually prepares biryani. Very simple, right? These are the simple.
the things that you know. But then also it's good to go through the past and to get it tackled. Clear? So now let's move to the preposition for F O R. We use the preposition for to denote the duration of the period or the length of the period. A period can be about a three months, it can be around a five month, it can be around six months. Clear? For example, we got into a new house which was recently constructed. We started living there before five months. One of a person is friendly to you, came to you and asked, Oh, David, you are here. So can I answer to them? How do you say? And I have been living here five months. I have been living here for five months. And it is clear. So we have entered the house before five months. We have started living here. But a friend have came to know about it. At that time. Hope oh, it's clear. Right? Now let's move to the other proposition. Since. S-I-N-C-E. Preposition. Do you feel a little clarity as less? Is it? No. Let me tell you once again. We are prepositioning the word before the important events and incidents. That's why we call this as preposition. The prepositioning words have been discussed in the beginning. So these are the prepositioning words. Make a note of all these. These are just reminders in between, okay? Yes. So let's move to the preposition sense. Sense is a preposition which we used indicate a time span from then till now. For example, you might be having uncles, aunties who live abroad, right? In case you do have joined with them, how do you make a sentence? I have been living there in London with them since 2012. How was the sentence? I have been living there in London with them since 2012. So you might have joined your uncle and aunt in the year 2012 and still you are living. Clear? So since is a preposition to denote the time span from then to now. Hope you got it clear. The last but not the least, let's move with the preposition by, be by. Every time we used to get a buffer time or the time to bounce up. Right? We should do the task before the date. The date that's been provided as the end of the date, we call it as a deadline or as the due date. But before that, we should set ours as ready with the task. Yes? Let's take an example of our mothers. Our mother usually tells us that you should raise a home before 6 p.m. in the evening. Or else, you should reach home at sharp 6. P.M. will be mentioned. Isn't it? But here, let's see how this sentence works. My mother told me to reach home by 7 p.m. One hour has been extended for you as a buffer time. Yes? See to the sentence. My mother told me to reach home by 7 p.m. So, here we should set our verses to reach home before 7 p.m. of the evening. 
here remember to do your task also in the same mood and practice let's move to three versions of preparation of food we always come across these terms that is to cook to bake and make let me explain the process in detail cook or cooking is being done with direct heat we do light in the stove to cleanse a vessel over there we do add the essential ingredients sometimes we do pour the oil we do sort the vegetables these all things are done over the heat this process is called cooking so the process where a direct heat is involved is called cooking and at the same time it should connect to the preparation of food the next process is to bake baking is a process where two vessels or one appliance or either a vessel is being got a few we do the baking in the pressure cooker a few will go with a microwave oven so how do we do that if the preheating has done the vessel or the appliance then the appliance is ready to bake the thing to bake the meat to one into the flame or the pot so before baking we should make the things set we do take a baking tray or else another pot where we are convenient to pour the batter or to pour the things which has to get set in the baking of a cake we do bake breads too right so first we should preheat the appliance for the vessel for at least 20 minutes then after that we do make the light to a simmer mode then we will take the tray to the vessel then we will keep the lid over it instead of keeping the lid we should fix the lid here yeah? but in the appliance is totally different we have to preheat the oven for 120 degrees celsius after that we have to switch it off then only we can take the baking tray to it and then only we can close the lid of the appliance clear so this is all about cooking and baking the more we make we always prepare the indian pancakes or the flatbreads right example for an indian pancake we will take the batter before that the stove will be lighted up we might place the tawa over there we will pour the batter to it we will make the shapes of the pancakes when it gets cooked we will flip it and then we will make the other part to cook so that we do absorb the proper heat for a level of cooking for an even cooking clear cooking is a process where all the things has to be evenly absorbed with the proper heat so that it will be easy for our stomach and the intestine to get digested clear so this is all about the three versions in preparation of food let's move to other two cordial thoughts now let's see to the two cordial words the two cordial words our cordial expressions are meat and c m e e t meat and s e e c we use meat or nice to meet you with the people who we meet for the first time and what about c we usually use the word c with them whom we know before it's a or who are very familiar to us for example a person is entering your class was very new to the school he has come to join your class to sit with you how do you greet him 
nice to meet you or glad to meet you else great meeting you or pleased to meet you for all your greetings he do respond right how do we respond me too isn't it if you share a great him the other one to share the same feeling to you that's how a greeting should go right and what about see nice to see you dear it's been a while since we last met this may be the conversation that comes after a few days when you come to the school isn't it you may be missing your friends you may be missing the school the premises the teachers the right conversation at the right time it should be concise and it should be precise too yes so now let's move to some expressions of time today we will be dealing with only two expressions they are the high time and at the eleventh hour they are the high time and at the eleventh hour what do we mean by the high time the very relevant time or the very short time at which we can make the things up to the point we call the time as high time let's see a sentence for that is high time to get conscious about my health there is no time to waste for that but we should ensure that we are spending time in taking care of our health too so it calls for the high time so how the sentence goes is high time to get conscious about our health then what about at the 11th hour we all have a habit to postpone things oh that is a day after tomorrow right no problem one more day is there i shall be born in that's a mistake if we do the things before the deadline we are at the safer side think in that sense clear okay? so never hurry with things at the 11th hour or at the last minute we shouldn't keep the things for the last moment we should do it before the deadline or before the time that's been given to us so it's better not to hurry for the things at the 11th hour hope today's session is clear for you so we went through many things today the basic expressions in time the prepositions the three versions in the preparation of food the styles of food right and the two cordial words and we have to use with the first signs and the known signs the familiar one and to the people whom we meet for the first time yes this is a reminder for you all it's a need and i wish you all to make a note of all these things that we discussed to a half note or else to a time we can note of all the things we discussed today to a tidy or else to a half note because the things we discussed will help us to follow the next sessions in a beautiful way okay so that's all for the day wish you all a great day ahead thank you all take care bye bye